how cool is this? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to build this thing from scratch. Just a bit of a teaser just here. It is an icosphere to which I have added this series of modifiers. And if I show you it without the cool lighting, that's it just there. Kind of boring, huh? So uh, let's build this thing from scratch just now, guys. Let's go up to File, New, General, and starting from scratch. Let's select that default cube, press X, and then delete. Okay, let's go up to Add, Mesh, Icosphere. And I'm just going to open up the panels on the right-hand side. So we're going to need to see uh, all of those cool options inside of our modifiers in just a moment. Okay, let's uh, zoom in on this Icosphere. And then let's come down to this little wrench in the Properties panel just here. These are, this section is for the modifiers. Add Modifier. Let's add an edge split. Now, nothing visually changed, but what this modifier is doing is it's actually splitting this shape along its edges. And we'll revisit this guy in just a minute. But what I'm going to first do is add our second modifier. So add modifier, come down to solidify. Okay, nothing's really changed just here. Let's look at some of these options just in here. I'll just close up edge split for a second. And here inside of solidify, the two major values that we're going to be playing with, guys, are thickness and offset. So let's uh, come straight into the offset value just here. Now it's currently set to negative one. I'm going to change that to one. Just press tab to jump into my next field to commit that. And did you see that little change there? It was subtle, but this little guy grew slightly, but uh, we're still not seeing any of these splits. Even if I zoom in here, these edges are still intact. So let's come back to this edge split modifier just now. The problem is this split angle just here. So if I hover over that, you can see that angle is controlling which edges to split based on the angle. So the problem here is this angle is just too high. So having experimented ahead of time, if I just drop this from 30 down to 10, and again, press tab to commit that, check it out. We have now got those splits showing up. That's fantastic. So the edge split has now split those edges where we would expect. And all we have to do now, guys, is come down to the uh, solidify section and really just play with thickness and offset here just to create something that's aesthetically pleasing. So I might increase this thickness a little bit just here. I'm going to push that up to 0 0.03. And then let's play with the offset just here. So I want to increase the size of the gap inside of there. So offset, let's take that from, say, 1 up to now 3. OK, this is starting to look pretty cool. I'm kind of liking that. And uh, we could quite happily leave it at that point there, guys, if you want these nice hard edges. I want to show you an alternative, if you would like smoother edges, is just to add a bevel. So back here in the modifier section, let's come and add that bevel. And you can see we've got some very sharp edges in there. So down here in the bevel, Specifics, let's change the number of segments from say one up to something like four. So that's clearly much, much smoother. But if we really want to make this very smooth, the icosphere itself, I can just right mouse click and choose shade smooth. And when I do that, we get nice smooth edges along the bevel. So again, up to you whether you want to add that bevel modifier or not. Okay, so this shape's looking pretty good. Clearly, we need to work on our lighting a little bit. So actually, let me jump. Uh, into our so our modes up here for the viewport shading guys it's currently set to solid if i jump into rendered that's what it's currently looking like because you can see it's being lit by this one light just up here now in the example i created i had that light glowing from the center of the icosphere so let's set that up just now so if i click on the lights and then down in the properties panel i'll click on the little light globe just here so these are the settings for the light itself now i'm going to want a much brighter light so it's currently set to 1000. I'm going to push that to 10,000. And also the color of the light. Make this a, a nice bright yellowy orange kind of color. That's looking great. And so now all we have to do is just move this thing into the center of the icosphere. So this little square option just here for object properties, if I click on that, here are our location values. I'm just going to zero all of the X, Y, and Z values. So now if I zoom in, you can see that light is indeed at the center of the icosphere. And let's uh, 
let's turn off our show overlays. That'll get rid of some of the grid just here. Again, this is looking kind of bland still, guys. So there's still a few things left to set. Now I'm thinking I want the light to be the only light source inside of here. So I'm going to go and turn off the little bit of global light that's going on just in here. In the properties panel again, there's a world properties section just there. It's the little globe. If I click on that, this color just here, yes, it's set to dark gray, but if I click on that, if I bring that all the way down to black, now it's going to remove all of the other light sources from within this document. So now the only light source here is the single light that we have. And we are pretty close here, guys, but it's still looking pretty bland, isn't it? There's one cool thing we need to do. If we come up to our render properties just here, there is a bloom section just here. If I turn that on, ta-da, there we go. That is the look that I showed you at the very start there, guys. So we are done at this point there. Okay, so that's how to create a cracked icosphere with a nice big ball of glowing light inside of it. Hope it gives you some uh, cool creative ideas moving forward, guys. Catch you later.